Hello, everybody. It's George from Ireland. Well, uh, a ceasefire is urgently needed in Gaza now. So the bloodletting began on the 7th of October, uh, which is when Hamas launches attacks on Israel, killing about 1,200 civilians, murdering, I should say, because if you purposefully kill a civilian when this is not a byproduct of a legitimate military attack, well, that is murder as much as it would be in peacetime. Um, and obviously Israel has um, retaliated. Uh, they want to annihilate Hamas, the um, Islamic resistance um, movement, uh, to give it its full name. So I suppose Israel's vowed that they're never, ever going to have this happen to them again and presumably want to make the Palestinians suffer so much. The Palestinians think it was an extremely big mistake. Now, obviously, um, Hamas kept its plan secret. There are Palestinians who loathe um, Hamas, particularly in the West Bank. Um, so uh, we can't blame most Gazans for what happened. But nevertheless, there's ordinary people who are paying the price. And I know it's very densely populated. And so it's very difficult for Israel to strike Hamas without also killing civilians. Now, Hamas says over 7,000 civilians have already been killed. Now, they might be exaggerating, but I don't think they're exaggerating by a factor of more than five. But if it's even a fifth of the number stated, then there's already more Palestinian civilians were killed than Israeli civilians have been killed. And we've seen this before the January 2009 attacks when a hundred times more Palestinian civilians were killed than Israeli civilians were killed. A hundred times more. And it'd probably be something like that. Again, 1,200 Israeli civilians put two zeros behind that. And that is the sort of butcher's bill that we may well uh, the world may well be paying, or the Palestinians, the poor beleaguered Palestinians, and they're not being allowed out. So um, uh, there needs to be a ceasefire now, and aid trucks need to be allowed in. The United Nations says that um, pa the, the, the Gaza needs at least 100 aid trucks per diem to, to sustain things. Um, and that about 20 were allowed in in one day, and obviously several days none were allowed in. So it was a horrific situation. Um, uh, hospitals short of everything, and then no fuel, no food. Um, Palestinians claim that bakeries have been have been uh, destroyed by the Israeli Defense Forces. I say claim because I don't know if that's true or not. And even if they were, that might not have been deliberate. Even if it was big one, even, well, they're hitting a proper Hamas target here, which happens to be beside the bakery, which then destroys the bakery as well. So Israel claims that Hamas has hidden its command centers, depots beneath hospitals and things like that, which might be true. I don't know. Um, so that Israel, the only way to to destroy the uh, depot is to destroy the hospital, which I think now Israel's not going to stint in doing. So yes, there's a right to self-defense, but that does not absolve Israel from the need to obey uh, international humanitarian law. But um, because the United States is back into the hilt, they're going to do these things. They've already begun their ground incursions. So it seems that they're going to go in and try and um, destroy Hamas on, on the ground. They can't entirely do it from the air, but they've done quite a lot of softening up from the air. So and obviously the Egyptians will not let the Gazans flee, even, even foreign citizens who happen to be trapped there. They're usually dual nationals for citizens of Palestine and another country. For instance, there are Irish citizens there. And so our government is obviously demanding that they be let out, but that's falling upon deaf ears at the moment. Could they even go to the Israeli side? Could the Israelis be uh, susceptible to pressure, particularly, say, from Americans? Are there any American citizens there? Okay, come to us, IDF, and we will evacuate you out. Um, so it's a very tense situation. I suppose the Israelis are so outraged that so many of their civilians were murdered. They're just in no mood to be merciful. Say, we don't care how many Palestinians or civilians we kill so long as we uh, obliterate Hamas. So I thought it'd be good if, if a third force went in that's trusted by both sides. It can't be from a Muslim country, wouldn't be trusted by Israel. It can't be from a Western country. Only country which has got amicable relations with Israel wouldn't be trusted by them. I mean, the Russians will get up to their own machinations and plus they didn't really have troops to spare. I thought the Chinese actually might be trusted by both sides and a sufficiently mighty country that you wouldn't want to mess with them. Um, but I, I very much doubt it's going to happen and Israel will get away with this again. OK, so you want to fight Hamas. All right. Fair enough. But no, you must not kill civilians. And they, they, they have made some efforts, move to the southern part of the Gaza Strip, but then bombing in anyway. So it's, it's a ghastly situation. And Western countries haven't been saying enough. No, no, no. You must abide by the Hague Convention, the Geneva Convention, even though your enemy do not. Um, all the time and things like that. And obviously the hostages should be um, released unconditionally now, should never have been taken. In the first instance, Israel claims it's 229 of them, just a couple of them released, I think, because they're American citizens. So Russia is actually um, hosting talks now, has Hamas there. So Russia does not prescribe Hamas, does not 
branded a terrorist organization. Russia is a country where the regime will claim that terrorists and journalists are the same thing, but they gives them leverage in the Islamic world when um, their host talks about Hamas. But despite that, that doesn't mean that some Russian Israelis have been set free. So it's a very worrying situation. Now, it's actually quite tricky for Hamas to conceal 229 people, presumably in lots of different locations, to feed them, to keep them alive. Some of them have got complex medical needs. They're, some of them are geriatrics or their babies or what other illnesses. And so it might be easy to release them if they die in captivity. Um, of natural causes, it might be assumed that Hamas killed them, which sense it would have done indirectly because it's, it's deprived them of, of medical help, which they would have had in Israel, a country which is renowned for its superb health care, for instance. Um, so it's it's a, um, a horrendous situation. And unfortunately, I just don't see the end in sight. I mean, the Israelis, their, their full scale invasion is, is maybe a fortnight off. The United States appears to have asked them to slow down. The United States is trying to defend its air bases in the regions more heavily, fearing that um, um, Muslim public opinion will be so insane sensed by the mass killing of, 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 of Palestinian civilians that they will, um, some people will take it on Uncle Sam, say, the United States, you give diplomatic cover to Israel, you wield your veto in the United Nations Security Council in Israel's favor. Incessantly, the United States has used its UN Security Council veto more than the, five, the four other member states, and it's used it mostly for Israel rather than for itself. And you fund Israel, and you sell them your best weaponry, and you share intelligence, and so on. So that's Israel can do all this. And obviously, I want Israel to exist. And there's a lot to be said about it. My hymn of praise to Israel. Yes. I mean, Israel treats its own citizens quite well. Um, you know, there are freedom of speech there and there are fair trials there and there are the death penalty. Um, what else can I say? I mean, the, the um, Arab Israelis are better treated than Arabs are in most Arab countries and things like that. And you can practice whatever religion you want there and people can be openly gay and things like that. There's gender equality. And all that is laudable, I must say. And um, uh, many, many of Israel's neighbors have horrific human rights records. OK, but none of that is justificatory of crimes against Palestinian civilians. Not everybody in the IDF is bad. Definitely not. I've known several IDF soldiers. Some of them are counted as soldiers, uh, sorry, as friends, you know. Um, and um, so Palestinians, unsurprisingly, don't like being under illegal occupation in the West Bank, having more of their land taken by these illegal colonies all the time. And the situation in in, Hama, uh, in, in, in Gaza was bad, even before Hamas carried out these attacks. Um, so uh, I would like, obviously, the refugees to be allowed to flee for their lives, but Egypt won't let them in. And that does seem very heartless. But then again, it's got 100 billion people. It's got severe economic problems in Egypt right now, high in inflation. And most countries don't want refugees. So why should one of the poorest countries take them? And it's, it's shameful that Qatar and Saudi Arabia, very wealthy Arab and Muslim countries, don't show the spirit of Arab brotherhood and um, Islamic brotherhood and save their um, sisters and brothers uh, from Palestine, despite going on about the Ummah. Well, thank you for watching the channel. And for once, I actually do agree with Sadiq Khan, the mayor of London, not my favorite politician. There desperately needs to be a ceasefire now. And cutting off water to the people of, of Palestine, Gaza in particular, is absolutely unacceptable, no matter what Hamas has done. Right. Thank you for watching my channel. And please subscribe uh, to be on Patreon. Get access to thousands more videos and articles there. Donate on PayPal, georgecallahan79 at gmail.com. Goodbye.